Now, let's you and I take a look at a couple of terms the FAA wants you to know about. First of all, let's take a look at an aircraft wing. Now, if you draw a line here from the trailing edge of the wing up to the leading edge, that line is called the cord line, and it points the direction the wing is pointed. Now, if the wing is going this way, then the wind will be coming from the opposite direction, and they call that the relative wind because it's relative to the wing itself. So if the wing is going this way, then the relative wind will be coming from the opposite direction. Now this angle between the cord line of the wing and the relative wind is called the angle of attack. And the FA wants you to know that. And they sometimes refer to this angle of attack as an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. So this acute angle is called the angle of attack. Now let's you and I take a look at this. First of all, you may be asked, what is this acute angle A here? Well, here is the cord line of the wing and here is the relative wind, and that angle is called the angle of attack. So one of the things you need to know is that this acute angle A is called the angle of attack. Now the angle of attack determines how much lift there will be on a wing. Now let's take a look at a wing of an airplane in flight. Now here's an airplane wing in a wind tunnel with smoke going smoothly over it. And when the air flows smoothly over the wing, it's called laminar flow. Now let's take a look at what happens when you change the angle of attack. As you increase the angle of attack, the lift gets greater. However, there's only lift as long as the air conforms to the surface of the wing. Now when you get the angle of attack too high, the air can no longer conform to the surface of the wing. Instead of flowing smoothly over the surface of the wing, it separates from the wing and then backfills and burbles and eddies. Lift is destroyed and the aircraft is said to have stalled. The point where you increase the angle of attack any more the lift is destroyed is called the critical angle of attack. Now let's take one more look at what we just saw there. We increase the angle of attack of this wing, and as it increases to the critical angle of attack, the relative wind can no longer conform to the surface of the wing. And when it separates from the surface of the wing, it backfills and burbles and eddies, and the lift is destroyed, and the aircraft is said to have aerodynamically stalled. Now, each airplane stalls at a specific angle of attack. The exact angle of attack, which the air can no longer conform to the surface of the wing, is really designed into the wing. So, what if you change the gross weight of the airplane? What would that do to the angle of attack at which an airplane stalls? And the answer is nothing. The angle of attack at which an airplane stalls remains the same regardless of a change in gross weight. The wing will get that angle of attack at different speeds based on its weight, but it always stalls at the same critical angle of attack. Now let's say we go up to higher altitudes. Now as you go to higher altitudes, the air gets thinner or less dense because the air molecules are spaced further apart. So an airplane has to move faster through that thinner or less dense air to create the same amount of lift as it does in more dense air. Now the airspeed indicator in an airplane measures the rate of air molecules pressing into the pitot tube. So when you're at higher altitude, the airplane has to actually move faster through the air to get the same air pressure in the pitot tube and the same indicated airspeed as it does at lower altitude. So the thin air affects your indicated airspeed the same way it affects your wing. And you'll stall at the same indicated airspeed at high altitude as you would at low altitude. 